Praise the Lord, my sisters and brothers. I'm your sister in Christ, Michelle Rice. And this is the prayer connection where you make a connection with God. Yes, this is now the prayer connection where you make a connection with heaven. Now, this show is designed to build you up, to strengthen you, and to encourage you to go into another level in your prayer life. Yes. It's designed by God to catapult you and to launch you forward and to another level in your prayer life. And we know that it's all done by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we all know that it's done by the great intercessor among us, the Holy Spirit. And we know that it's all done by the all-powerful Father God in Jesus' mighty name. Let's pray. Oh, Father God, Roski Tiando Roboshkata. Yono no no ko riana na shiando roboko. Yano no no ko satara na kande roboshe. Just in case you don't know, what I'm doing right now is praying in my heavenly language. Yano no no ko skiando roboko rasha. Yano no no ko sa. And if you have your heavenly language given by the Holy Spirit, begin to pray now. And those of you that don't have a heavenly language, don't know about a heavenly language, don't know about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we're going to be teaching on that in the times and days to come. But right now, I'm just letting you know that it's all God. When you pray in your heavenly language, you will come to learn that it's all God. It's nothing spooky, nothing demonic. It's all God. So right now, those that have a heavenly language given by the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, let's pray in our heavenly language. When you pray in your heavenly language, you build yourself up. You edify yourself in the name of Jesus when you pray in a heavenly language oh the power of God comes on you he puts super on your natural in the mighty name of Jesus so right now we're going to take out a little time for those of us that have the Holy Spirit the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you're a child of the Most High God, you already have the Spirit of God. You already have the Holy Spirit. He lives in you. But the, but the a heavenly language is a gift. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a gift. But you already have the Holy Spirit. You already have the Spirit of Jesus Christ in you if you're a believer. Now, if you're not a believer, we're going to take out the time at the end of this broadcast to lead you in a simple prayer that you could become a child of the Most High God. But right now, let's pray in our heavenly language. Father God, we praise you. We give you glory, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We calling on the Holy Spirit of the living God, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of the living God, that he will fall fresh on every intercessor. Oh God, that's on this line today. Everybody that's listening, everybody that's watching, everybody that's watching on Facebook Live, everybody that's watching on KAZ Radio, everybody that's watching on YouTube, everybody that's watching in Cleveland. On the public access station, on television, wherever you are finding this broadcast, God is saying today, he's putting super on your natural. He's putting a super divine element on your natural being so you can pray effectively. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The effectual fervent, the effectual fervent, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman avails much. We are supposed to pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. At all times pray. In the good times, in the bad times, when you feel good and when you don't feel good. If you're rich or poor, if you're tall or short, if you're black or white, it doesn't matter your status, your gender. He says pray with pray without ceasing. Pray at all times. Men should always pray if not faint. Men should always pray and not faint. 
It's time to pray and not faint. Don't give up. Don't be weary in well-doing. For in due season you will reap. If you faint not, press in and press on in prayer. Press in and press on in prayer. Your prayer avails much. Your prayer is availeth much. Your prayer is powerful in the name of Jesus. God just want to hear your voice in the morning in the name of Jesus. God want to hear your voice in Jesus mighty. He want to hear your voice in the morning, in the noonday. And even when the sun goes down, just keep letting me hear your voice. Your voice matters. Your voice matters. Your prayer matters. I know the preacher is praying. I know the deacon is praying. I know the prophet is praying. But God says you can pray and your prayer matters. Your prayer can change his things. Your prayer is effectual and your prayer changes things. For we are in the last days, saints. We are in the last days, and as we are as we are enveloped right now in the last days, our prayer is even more so important, more so necessary, more so necessary. It's more so necessary. Your prayers are necessary to usher in the usher in the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in his rapture, in his second coming, in the name of Jesus. Oh, nana masiando robo korea rabasa. Ya no 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 korasha nana na kande. We are in the last days, saints. He Jesus said, "Pale this time shall come." We are in the last day. He said, "Perilous times shall come." Perilous times are already here, saints. These are the last days. Right before the rapture of the church, right before the second coming, it's time. The season is now. Now faith is. It's now faith is. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things now seen. Now it's, it's the, the season is now. Jesus Christ can come back any second, any moment, any minute. Any second, any moment, any minute. The Bible says, Watch ye therefore. For ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Matthew 24, 42. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. When you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Matthew 24, 33. When you should see all these things, all the sounds of the towns coming to pass, know that it is near. Jesus' return is near, even at the doors. Matthew 24, 44 says, Therefore, be ye ready for such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man come. Therefore, be ye also ready for such an hour as you think not, as you think not, the Son of Man shall come. In Jesus' mighty name. You got to be ready when it come. And when he come back, he want to find you in faith. Find you walking in love. Find you praying. Find you being a witness of the Lord. Find you giving. When Jesus Christ want to come back, he, when he comes back, he want to find you in your assignment. He want to find you on your knees. He want to find you preaching the gospel. He want to find you teaching all nations his word. When he comes back, he want to find you as a good steward. He want to find you being a good mother and a good father. When he comes back, Jesus Christ, he want to find you being a good daughter, being a good son. When he comes back, he want to find you being a good son, being a good daughter, being a good grandparent. When he comes back, he want to find you being a good pastor, being a good prophet, being a good minister, being a good elder. He want to find you being a good sister, being a good brother. When Jesus Christ come back, he want to find you in the call that he's called you to because we all got calls on our life. You might not be in a pulpit, but that's okay. The world is your pulpit. Your job is your pulpit. 
Your neighborhood is your pulpit. Your your community is your pulpit. Your city is your pulpit. Your state is your pulpit. Your country is your pulpit. When he comes back, he will find you in your pulpit. He given us all a pulpit to tell the goodness of the Lord, to share the goodness of the Lord, to testify of his goodness, to tell somebody that Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, get your house in order. He want to come back finding you the, a spiritual Paul Revere. When he comes back, he want to find you being a spiritual Paul Revere. Paul Revere went through the cities and went through the towns. And he told them, the British is coming. The British is coming. He warned them. He said, the British is coming. Your enemy is coming. The British is coming. The British is coming. We need to be the Paul Revere's of our day. Telling everybody that we come in contact with. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Get your house in order. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Get your house in order. Get your house in order. For ye know not the day or the time when the Lord doth come. But he's coming. He's coming, coming, it's coming like a thief in the night. He's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Watch ye therefore. For ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. And when you see all the signs of the times coming to pass. And all the things that God, Jesus Christ has prophesied. When you see all of these things, know that it is near. Even at the doors. Oh, So be also ready. For ye know not what hour your Lord does come. And the hour that you think not. That he's not coming. He's coming. In the name of Jesus. How do we know that he's coming? The signs of the time. It's all around us. The Bible says in Matthew 6. That you will hear wars and rumors of wars. There will be nation against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. That's a sign of the time. The sign that you know the rapture is near. The sign of the time the second coming is coming. When you see wars and rumors of wars. Look at it. Russia. Ukraine, that's a sign of the time. He, he, Jesus prophesied in Matthew 24 that you will see wars and rumors of wars. It's not a rumor anymore. It's a real war. So, Father God, we pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus for Ukraine and Russia. We pray for divine protection, divine intervention for Ukraine. Divine intervention, divine intervention, divine protection for the people in Ukraine. We decree and declare that the enemy might come in one way, but he will flee seven ways. The Bible says that your enemies might come in one way, but they will flee seven ways. We decree that and declare that over Ukraine. We can decree a thing. The Bible says decree a thing and so shall your words be established. So we decree and declare concerning you, the Ukraine that the enemy might have come in one way, but he's going to flee seven ways in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So shall our words be, they go forth out of our mouth. It will not return into us void, but it will accomplish what we please and prosper into the thing to where we send it. The enemies has come in one way, but the, the Bible says that the enemy is going to leave Ukraine seven ways. In Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says, submit yourself unto God. Resist that devil and he will flee. He will flee. I know the Ukraine has been fleeing, fleeing the, the Ukraine because of the Russians. But the Bible says, right, that it's, going, it's, going, it's, it's approaching the time that we're just going to submit ourselves to God. We're going to resist that devil. And he going to flee. Not us. He, not the Ukrainian. He, he going to flee. Putin and all his cohorts. The spirit of Putin. We're not against the man. We're not against flesh and blood. It's spiritual wickedness in high places. The Bible says you don't wrestle against a Putin. You don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But against principalities. Against powers. Against the rules of darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. 
The spirit of Putin is spiritual wickedness in high places. We're not binding up a, a man. We're not coming against the man. We're coming against the spirit that's driving the man. The spirit that's controlling him. We're coming against every controlling spirit. We're coming against the spirit of a Hitler. We come against that spirit. We bring it down. We cut off the head of Goliath. We cut off the head of the spirit spirit that's on Putin. We cut his head off in Jesus. And we cut off the head of the serpent. We cut off the head of the spirit of Hitler. We cut off the, the spirit of controlling demons. We come off this. We cut off the head of the spiritual wickedness in high places. In Jesus' name. We also pray for Ukraine and Russia in the mighty name of Jesus concerning this. Oh God, in the book of Chronicles, it said when the when the when the Moabites and the Moabites and the Jebusites and all the ites, so to speak, all of them when they came against Israel, the Bible says they began to praise and worship God. And all of a sudden their enemies began to fight one another. Destroy one another. It's coming a season and time as the church began to praise, as the church began to worship, as the church began to glorify God and magnify God and lift Jesus higher and higher and higher. That the enemy, that enemy, the enemies of those spirits in Russia, they're gonna fight each other and destroy each other without Ukraine, NATO, or anybody lifting up a finger. That's the book of Chronicles, chapter 20. Read it. It's real. It's true. And we decree that and declare that concerning Russia and Ukraine. We decree and declare there will be a swift end to this invasion. How do we know we can say that? Because the Bible says, I will hasten my word to perform it. The Bible said that the word of the Lord says that he will hasten his word to perform it. So we decree and declare in the name of Jesus, oh God, that there will be a swift end to this invasion. You said, I will hasten my word. I will hasten my word. I will hasten my word to perform it. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, yes, it's going to be wars and rumors of wars. Kingdom against kingdom and nation against nation. But we got the word of the Lord. We got the sword of the spirit to pray at such a time as this. We are the Esthers of our day. We pray. We are called to intercede and pray at such a time as this. That God will in divinely intervene on every circumstance we pray for in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says in Matthew 24 that it will be not only wars and rumors of wars, but be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. Famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. Famines. A time of food shortages. We see the we see the precursor now. We see the see the foreshadowing now. There's the, there's less food on the shelves, and all the shortages are going to come on. But in the last days, Jesus already prophesied in Matthew 24 that you will see famines. But don't worry, church. If you are a child of the Most High God, a famine is not going to even hurt you, because He's teaching us to be like Joseph. God is teaching us how to be like Joseph in a season of famine. When famine hit, when it really hit, the children of God that heard the voice of the Lord will, 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 will have already prepared. They will already have been like Joseph. There were seven years of famine and seven years of plenty. And in the seven years of plenty, they stored up for the seven years of famine. In the book of Genesis, J Joseph, the prime minister, in the seven years of plenty, he stored up for the seven years of famine. So when the famine hit, they had plenty of food. So if you're a wise man, if you're a wise woman, you should be storing up. Food is here. It's there. It's on the shelves. A little less, a little shortage, but it's still here. Store up, saints. Don't be frantic. Don't be crazy about it. Don't be worrying. Don't be anxious, but store up. So when a famine hit, you already got food. Stored up, laid up, canned up, late already done. That's the wisdom of God. How to act when you know famine coming. What to do in times of plenty. You store up like Joseph did. And he was, he and his, and the people, they were spared. They were spared of the famine because they had food laid up. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. So even in that, the Bible says, David, I was young and now I'm old. Never, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, neither his seed begging bread. We, we will be we will be able to be like this. I was young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, neither his seed begging bread. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, neither his seed begging bread. We got a God, his name is Jehovah Jireh. The God that supplies all of our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He supplies all of our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Not according to your bank account, not according to your wallet, not according to your purse, not according to your, uh, your, your checks account, not according to your savings account, not according to any of that. It's according to his riches and glory and there's no shortage, shortage in heaven. He's going to supply your need even in a famine. He will supply your need. You will laugh at the face of famine because God has a God a provider. He will prepare you a table in the presence of your enemies. He's preparing a table in the presence of our enemies, even in a shortage, even in a famine. Because famine is a sign of the time that Jesus is coming back. In Jesus' name. The Bible also says in Matthew 24, the signs of the time that there'll be famines and pestilences in Jesus' name and, and earthquakes. The pestilences. The coronavirus is a pestilence. The Delta, the, the Delta variant is a pestilence. Omicron is a pestilence. Omicron BA2, the new variant, is a pestilence. It's a sign of the time. It's a plague. It's a pestilence. Jesus already prophesied. He said, when you see these things, know there's a sign of the time. He said, when you see all these things, the Bible says in Luke 21, 28, and when these things, be, and when these things come to pass, then you look up and lift up your head. For you know that your redemption draws now. When you see all these things, wars and rumors of wars, when you see all these things, famines in diverse places, when you see all these things, the pestilence, the plagues, and all this coming to pass, when you see all these things, the earthquakes, the natural disasters, the natural disasters in Luke 21, 26, and when these things come to pass, when you see these things come to pass, you will know it is time to look up. Look up. And lift up your heads. Lift up your heads. For your redemption draws nigh. It's all the signs of the time. He said, Don't worry about these things. Don't even worry. When you see all of these things, he said, The end is not yet. It is a sign of the time. It's pointing to the return of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name. It speaks of earthquakes as a sign of the time. Not only earthquakes, but it means also natural disasters. You're going to see, see earthquakes in diverse places. When it says diverse places, it means you will see it in frequency and intensity. You will see earthquakes and natural disasters in frequency and intensity. It's a sign. It's a birth pain. It's the beginning of sorrows. It's pointing to Jesus Christ's return. You've seen earthquakes in diverse many places, tornadoes in many places. And we saw earthquakes here in Ohio. A, a little a little shaking, not nothing major, but they found the earthquake tremors in on the, on the Lake Erie. It's a sign of the time. You haven't seen that like that in Ohio. Bible Jesus said in the last days you will see them in intensity and in frequency. Wildfires in intensity and in frequency. Tornadoes in intensity and in frequency. Seeing them in places you've never seen them like that before. It's a sign of the time. Oh God in the name of Jesus. 
Oh, Watch ye therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Oh, When he see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Be also ready for such an hour as you think not. Oh, the Son of Man comes. And when these things come, to pass and you see all these things look up look up look up look up lift up your head lift up your head for your redemption draws now in the mighty name of Jesus another sign of the time he said that the love of many will wax cold the love of many will wax cold we see it we see the love of many waxing cold even in the church he said, don't forsake yourself the assembly of the church. And don't forsake the assembly of yourselves in the church. People, people don't want to come back to church. Then they got comfortable in COVID, comfortable on YouTube, comfortable on Zoom, comfortable. They don't want to come back. He said, but the love of many will wax cold. We already see it. You see an indifference in the church. An apathy in the church. A spirit of backsliding right in the church. He don't want us cold or hot. He don't, he, he don't want us cold. He said, he said, I'd rather you be cold or hot. Don't be lukewarm. He don't want you cold, but he would rather you be cold than lukewarm. He don't want us complacent. He don't want us to turn lazy and slothful and slugger. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come against the spirit of apathy. We come against the spirit of complacency in the church. We don't want our love to wax cold like the world. God, in the name of Jesus, put us back on fire. In the mighty name of Jesus, our God is a consuming fire. Fire from heaven. We want the fire from heaven. Set us back on fire in the name of Jesus. Back on fire. Back on fire in the name of Jesus. We want to be back on fire in the mighty name of Jesus. We won't be the people that say that our love is waxing cold. But we're going to be, be the people that's on fire for God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now. For those of you that don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you're in a dire predicament. He come back, you not ready, we don't want to talk about it, but hell is your portion. Jesus Christ come back right now. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, don't want to, people don't want to talk about it, but hell, fire and brimstone is your portion. But it doesn't have to be. Heaven can be your portion. Jesus Christ will come back this second, any moment, any second, any, any moment, any day. And he come back, you can be ready when he come. I know you ready. You don't listen to this broadcast. God has been tugging at your heart. Now it's time to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Let me lead you in a simple prayer. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Save me from my sin. You said if I confess with my mouth, repeat it. Come on, let's, let's pray now. It's time to pray. Don't look at me. Say, say, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth. The Lord Jesus. I believe in my heart that God say it. God raised him from the dead. I will be saved. For with my mouth, I just confessed it. And with my heart, I believe it. Now, if you pray that simple prayer, you are a child of God. Get you a Bible. Read that Bible. Learn about Jesus, the God that saved your soul. Talk to him in prayer like you do your best friend, like a conversation. Talk to him. That's praying. And ask God to lead you to a good church that you can join up with other believers. Join up and be part of the body of Christ on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Well, saints, I will see you next time on the Prayer Connection, where you make a connection with God. I'll see you next time on the Prayer Connection, 
where you make a connection with heaven. Love you. And most of all, the Father loves you, the Son loves you, and the Holy Spirit loves you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bye-bye.